Myra Shalou, president of the BPW Maine Futurama Foundation. Um, I would like to welcome you to our first virtual um, celebration of the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Um, we are honoring our 2020 inductees, Joan DeCangelo and Betty Jane Meter. Um, and the honorees of 2021, Joyce Gibson and Leigh Softly. Uh, welcome honorees and viewers. I am now pleased to introduce Rebecca White, President of the University of Maine at Augusta, to provide greetings as the host of our virtual event. Good afternoon and welcome to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The University of Maine at Augusta is honored to be a co-sponsor of this event and to serve as the home of the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, which is housed in the Bennett Cates Library on our Augusta campus. Recognizing women whose contributions have positively impacted the people of Maine closely aligns with UMA's own mission to transform the lives of students of every age and background across the state through access to higher education. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our co-host, the BPW Futurama Foundation, for joining UMA in this work by providing an annual scholarship to a woman enrolled at UMA who is also a single parent pursuing an education that will serve to transform her own life and those of her children. Today, we honor four remarkable women, four daughters of Maine, all of whom were drawn in one way or another to our public university system, to launch their own futures through their education or to advance the futures of others through their work. It has been my privilege to bear witness to each of these women. Joanne, Betty Jane, Joyce, and Lee, you have given generously of yourselves to the people of our wonderful state and have inspired everyone, especially women and girls, with your words and your deeds. I offer my appreciation for your work and it is with great pleasure that I join with others today in honoring each of you and your legacies. Thank you all, and please enjoy the program. Now I would like to introduce our chair to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, Marilyn Ladd. Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn Ladd. I serve as trustee and office manager of the BPW Maine Futurama Foundation and Maine Women's Hall of Fame uh, uh, Chair for 2021. I extend from the trustees of the foundation our great appreciation to President Wyke and her staff for organizing the virtual ceremony for this the 31st and 32nd annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thank you for joining uh, with us today. Gathering in restrictions have required this virtual event However, we are very excited to present our distinguished honorees and we are happy to present this special program. Today's presentation will honor our 2020 inductees, Betty Jane Stanhope Meter and Joanne D. Archangelo, and our 2021 inductees, Joyce Gibson and Lee Softly. As we begin, we are pleased to share greetings from the Governor Janet Mills who was inducted into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame in 2019. Hello, this is Governor Janet Mills, speaking to you from Augusta, welcoming you to the 2021 virtual induction ceremony to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. And thank you to organizers, the BPW, Domna, and uh, Joyce for organizing this event. Not even a worldwide pandemic can keep us from celebrating the accomplishments of Maine women and from honoring four women in particular whom I've known for years. I wish I could be with you all today in person, but you know, as I was in 2019 before this pandemic, but I am excited to welcome everybody to the virtual induction ceremony. Today, we celebrate the contributions of four women, all of whom are friends of mine to the future of our state. As advocates, educators, and lawyers, they have all championed equality for women and girls for decades, and they've helped create a brighter future for generations to come. Dean of the University of Maine School of Law, 
and former Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Court, Lee Softley. She was the youngest and the first woman to be appointed as Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Court. I have known Dean Softley for more than three decades, and I've tried and argued cases in front of her, so I know her firsthand the power of her voice. Her perspective and her partnership on improving the lives of Maine people has been invaluable to me and to our state. Now she's educating the next generation of legal professionals in Maine. Dr. Joyce Gibson, Associate Professor of Leadership Studies at the University of Southern Maine and former Dean of the Lewis and Auburn College, led the effort to recruit, retain, and promote female faculty, especially in the STEM fields. I offer my warmest congratulations to Dean Softley and to Dr. Gibson on being inducted to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. We also recognized <clears throat> today last year's leaders and inductees whom we were not able to uh, celebrate in person. You know, there are very few advocates that I have worked with as closely over the years as Joanne D'Arcangelo. Joanne's unshakable belief in social justice has advanced equality by leaps and bounds in state law, from her advocacy to ensure reproductive choice, privacy, and health care, to protecting all workers from sexual harassment in the workplace. Our state is stronger because of Joanne D'Arcangelo's passion for progress. Joanne has also worked as a coach and mentor to the next generation, something her other fellow inductee also has in common. Betty Jane Stanhope Meter inspired young women and girls every day for more than four decades at Thomas College. And as state president and the diversity and inclusion chair of the American Association of University Women, she continues to encourage women students to succeed. Joanne and Betty Jane, congratulations on being Maine Women's Hall of Fame 2020 inductees. I often think, you know, of all the women on whose shoulders we stand today. I think of so many women writers and workers, advocates and artists, um, sailors and sportswomen, educators and lawyers, all those sung and unsung heroes who left their mark on Maine. People like Edna St. Vincent Millay, tribal healer Molly Ockett, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Gail Laughlin, Carolyn Doobie Glassman. Just as we stood on their shoulders, so too will new generations stand on your shoulders to reach unprecedented heights. The Jessica Myers, the Joan Benoit Samuelsons of today, the heroines and architects of our future. I thank you, Dean Softley, Dr. Gibson, Joanne D'Arcangelo, and Betty Jane Stanhope Meter for your work to improve the lives of women across our state, for setting an example and being role models. And I welcome you to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you. Now we would like to share greetings from Maine's congressional delegation, Senator Susan Collins, a 2011 Maine Women Hall of Fame inductee, Senator Angus King, Congresswoman Shelley Pingree, a 2001 Maine Women Hall of Fame inductee, and Congressman Jared Golden. Good afternoon. To paraphrase an old saying, behind every great state there are great women. For 31 years, the Maine Women's Hall of Fame has paid well-deserved tribute to our great state's great women. It is a pleasure to welcome the 2020 and 2021 inductees to the Hall of Fame and to thank them for their contributions. These four join an illustrious group of women in public service, science, business, education, athletics, and the arts. I know Lee Softly the best, so I'm going to begin with her. I've always admired Lee, who made history as the first woman to serve as Maine's Chief Justice. I've had the pleasure of conferring with her on many issues, including the drug crisis, domestic violence, and the protection of children. As Dean of the University of Maine School of Law, 
her knowledge, compassion, and commitment to equal justice will continue to serve our great state well. Joanne D'Arcangelo is an effective policy advocate and nonprofit leader. Betty Jane Stanhope Meter achieved success in the business world. She now contributes in education, the arts, and women's rights. Joyce Gibson is known as the drum major for justice. She marshals her experience to promote equality for women and girls throughout our state. By honoring the leaders of today, the Hall of Fame helps provide girls and young women with role models to inspire them to become the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you, Lee, Joanne, Betty Jane, and Joyce for your service to our state. Congratulations on these well-deserved honors. Man, women's Hall of Fame, University of Maine at Augusta. What a great program. And the people that you are recognizing for last year and this year are just fantastic residents of Maine. My old friend, Joanne D'Arcangelo from last year and also Betty Jane Stanhope Meter, uh, who have just made numerous continuous contributions to the life of this state. And I just wanna congratulate them for last year's uh, recipients. And then this year, Joyce Gibson and Lee Softley. Uh, uh, Lee, of course, I know well, having appointed her as Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Court, and she exceeded my expectations and made me proud to have made that appointment. So uh, Joyce and Lee, congratulations for the recognition this year. And I'm just honored to even have a chance uh, to, con to join in the celebration today. And let's hope that next year, uh, this celebration can be in person. Congratulations to the recipients. Congratulations to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame and the University of Maine at Augusta for making it possible. Thank you so much for all you do for the state of Maine. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Shelley Pingree. Thanks for inviting me to celebrate the newest members of the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. I'm very sorry we cannot recognize our 2020 nominees in person, but I'm thrilled to be able to share my thoughts with all of you today. I'm so pleased to extend my congratulations to Joanne D'Arcangelo, Betty Jean Meter, Joyce Gibson, and Lee Softley as they take their places today in the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Betty Jane, as an educator for over four decades, you have shaped lives by inspiring your students to do their best and to dream big. Your can-do attitude and generosity are legendary. And I can only imagine that your field trips to visit the New York City fashion scene were more than memorable. I applaud your outstanding leadership in state and national organizations, on multiple boards, and with so many community projects boldly promoting activism, inclusion, and diversity along the way. Whenever you have identified a need, you have come up with a plan of action and you have rallied others to join you. Betty Jane, you have touched many lives, nurtured many deep friendships, and worked so hard to improve our world. Thank you for helping to make Maine the way life should be. So Joanne, who among us is not where we are, at least in part because of you. You've done so much for so many, for your work for the Maine Democratic Party and the legislature, to being the first executive director at the Maine Women's Lobby, to re reproductive rights advocacy with the Maine Family Planning and Planned Parenthood of Northern New England, and as a consultant and coach. Your ability to strat strategize and mobilize has made you an effective, an admired advocate and leader. You've helped ensure that Maine women have choice, have protections in the workplace, and that they can live their lives with dignity. Joanne, you have always had the courage to speak truth to power and to stand up for those who lack a voice. Thank you for your four decades of visionary work that protect and advance the rights of Maine people and 
Thank you for being a treasured and trusted friend. Joyce, your colleagues have called you one of the strongest and most passionate advocates for women's advancement and equality in our state. And it's true. You recognized early on that education provides opportunity. At USM, you have put this philosophy to good use. As an educator and advocate, you have elevated Maine women, both in the classroom and outside of it. When you organized the Women's Leadership Collaborative, you helped harness leadership potential and ensure that Maine women have the tools to succeed in the Androscoggin region. Thank you for extending a hand to underserved Maine women and girls. And thank you for promoting equity, access, and education. Lee, as the first woman and youngest member of the court to be appointed Chief Justice in Maine, you have been a powerful role model and an advocate for women and families in our state. Starting with your work on behalf of Maine veterans to your time in the Maine Attorney General's office, your career has been one of public service. You've been a powerhouse for good from your years as part of Maine's judiciary, including leading Maine's highest court for over two decades to becoming Dean of the University of Maine School of Law. Your leadership have, has been a beacon for so many, including me, and I never know where I'll run into you. Thank you so much. We're all missing the opportunity to celebrate together. This is one of those events where we can see old friends, meet new leaders, and celebrate the incredible work of Maine women. But I'm pleased to virtually welcome each of you to this esteemed group of women who have pushed, inspired, challenged, rallied, lobbied, and persisted. I celebrate that you are leaders who have refused to take no for an answer and have encouraged others to do the same. Let's toast to the incredible women being recognized today. Joanne, Betty Jane, Joyce, and Lee. I'm honored to call you my neighbors, colleagues, and friends. Cheers. First of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to help honor four highly accomplished Mainers and celebrate their induction into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Each of the women recognized today has helped make our state a better place. Their dedication to their work and to service so clearly exemplifies the kind of work that should put someone in the Hall of Fame. I'd like to offer my sincere congratulations to each of the four inductees, Joanne D. Arcangelo, Betty Jane Stanhope Meter, Joyce Gibson, and Lee Softley. Each of these women adds to our state's proud and remarkable tradition of strong, effective leaders that makes me proud to call Maine home. So finally, congratulations to all of you on your achievements, not only today, but over a lifetime of service to your communities, your students, and young Mainers across the state. We will now begin our induction ceremony for our 2020 honorees. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Judy Denmore, Recording Secretary of the American Association of University Women. Judy will present our first 2020 inductee to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, Betty Jane Stanhope Meter. She's a woman educated in the traditional field in a conservative state. So what made Betty Jane Stanhope Meter stand out as worthy of being inducted into the Maine Woman's Hall of Fame? It will become clear as I describe the trajectory of her life. Betty Jane was a trailblazing professor at Thomas College. She had been educated in home economics, a traditional field for women. Yet her course material evolved as the woman's role in the workplace advanced. In 1971, she was the first professor of fashion merchandising. With an eye to the future, she initiated a four-year program in retail management. Betty Jane organized trips to New York City's fashion scene to provide real-life exposure. 
she positively impacted her students through instruction and attentive mentoring, equipping them to realize their dreams. In addition to inspiring students, Betty Jane influenced women in the American Association of University Women, an organization that has supported girls and women since 1881. This is how I met her and learned to appreciate her zeal. She realized women needed an organization such as AAUW that empowered them by providing leadership, financial, legal, salary negotiation, research, advocacy, mentoring, and networking support. She became an active member of the Waterville branch of AAUW and served as the membership vice president for several terms the college and university representative for Thomas College and the branch president. During that time, she attended many state, regional and national conventions. She also organized the first annual tabling event on Equal Pay Day and raised money for fellowships for female graduate students by serving as the auctioneer one year's holiday auction raised over $1,400. As years passed, Betty Jane also became involved with AAUW of the state of Maine. She has served as membership vice president, secretary, and president of the state board. As president, she spent many hours at hearings and work sessions related to women's issues at the State House. She became a member of the coalition Alliance for Maine Women for seven years, volunteered at Girls' Day at the State House, and participated in tabling events on Women's Day at the State House. Betty Jane recruited e-student affiliates of AAUW from area colleges, mentored young women at leadership conferences, such as AAUW's National Conference for College Women, and Maine New Leadership. She has done more than prepare young women for their future. She has sustained support for them along the way. When Betty Jane recognized that immigration is a reality in Maine, she became the first diversity and inclusion chair on the AAUW of Maine State Board. While serving in this capacity for the past four years, she has informed members of the value of diversity. A lifelong Mainer, Betty Jane has developed a network of contacts and organizations throughout the state to enhance and coordinate their efforts on behalf of women. She is a past state president and present board member of the Maine Association of Family and Consumer Sciences, formerly the Maine Home Economics Association. She is the membership chair and recipient of the 2018 Member of the Year Award of the Kappa Chapter of Delta Kappa Gamma Society of Women Educators. Betty Jane supports her alma maters as well. She was a member of the Board of Trustees at Foxcroft Academy for five years. She served on the Board of Visitors at the University of Maine at Farmington for six years. Additionally, Betty Jane is an active member of the First Congregational Church and volunteers at the Evening Sandwich Program and the Essentials Closet, which serve people on the margin in the community. A supporter of the arch, arts, she sees nearly every film at Railroad Square Cinema and most of the production, productions and events at the Waterville Opera House. 
She also attends art talks, concerts, and plays at Colby College. Betty Jane Stanhope Meter illustrates the forward thinking influence women can have before and after retirement. She is a model of contribution, dedication, and innovation in improving the lives of women and girls in Maine. It is my honor to congratulate Betty Jane on her well-deserved induction into the 2020 Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you, Judy, for that wonderful presentation. We will now hear from the 2020 Maine Women's Hall of Fame inductee, Betty Jane Stanhope Meter. As I stand here on the stage of this empty fiber forum in Jewett Hall at the University of Maine at Augusta this afternoon, I am truly honored, yet humbled, to be inducted into the 2020 Maine Women's Hall of Fame with as distinguished a woman as Joanne D'Arcangelo. I first came to know and respect Joanne when she served as the lobbyist for the Maine Women's Lobby in 1988. Congratulations, Joanne. Because college educators and administrators are rarely recognized for their daily impact on students, I am delighted Dr. Joyce Gibson and Dean Lee Softley are being inducted into the 2021 Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Joyce and Lee. The first Maine Women's Hall of Fame inductee was the late Senator Margaret Chase Smith, one of my idols. In memory of her, I am wearing a red rose cassage. None of us would be here today if it were not for former BPW member Carol Souvenir, one of the founders of the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Carol, now 90, was the receptionist at Thomas College where I taught for 41 of my 44 years of teaching. Thank you, Carol. Two of my mentors were college educators are the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. The late Dr. Catherine Musgrave was one of my professors, classmates, and colleagues in graduate school at the University of Maine at Arno, where I served as a graduate assistant. She was 90 when she was inducted in 2011. After my near-death experience two years ago, I knew the opportunity of my being inducted at that age would be unlikely. Another mentor and college educator, the late Dr. Elizabeth Crandall, was inducted in 1996. I had the honor of serving as one of her presenters and later delivered a eulogy at her memorial service. Liz and I served on the state boards of the Maine Home Economics Association, now the Maine Association of Family and Consumer Sciences, and the American Association of University Women of Maine. She was our legislative conscience. When I was an undergraduate student at Farmington State College, now the University of Maine at Farmington, Dr. Carlene Hillman, director of home economics and a professor of mine, gave me $100 out of her pocket to pay for my student standby ticket to Dallas, Texas to attend my first National American Home Economics Association convention. When she retired, I enclosed a crisp $100 bill in my retirement card to her. These three mentors were among the key women who impacted my life and teaching. As a college educator myself, my goal was to prepare students for life and a career. In addition to giving them the subject matter knowledge they needed, I provided my students with learning uh, beyond my classroom lectures through trips to New York City and Boston, fashion show and pageant productions, local field trips, seminars on interview attire and techniques and dining etiquette, formal dinners at my home, advertising campaigns developed for local businesses, and guest speakers such as public relations maven Nancy Marshall, who inspired my students and hired one of them. To remain current in my field, I attended the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City for five summers, studied fashion in Paris, Thailand, and Hong Kong, attended conferences throughout the country, and enrolled in multiple webinars. 
One summer, I was one of the professors in the country, 16 professors in the country, selected to participate in a one-week professor internship at the J.C. Penney headquarters in Plano, Texas. Former student Kathy Veu Chassis climbed the corporate ladder to district manager at J.C. Penney before heading to the Neiman Marcus Group as regional director, and now Sally Beauty Holdings as a director of state operations, store operations for 1,215 stores. In a recent email message, Kathy wrote, your influence definitely inspired who I am today. The success of my students has been my reward. Many of my former students have become lifelong friends. Carrie Bro Oliver, an owner of several businesses, and I meet regularly for lunch. The day I retired, Carrie tapped on my classroom door and delivered a beautiful floral arrangement during my last class. When she learned colleagues and I were gathering at a restaurant for lunch that day, she had a bottle of champagne waiting on the table. Carrie spoke at my college retirement party and shared a story about how I truly cared for my students. Early in the semester, I discovered that Paula Jo Warren Varney had a hearing problem and arranged an appointment to get her hearing checked, something no one else had convinced her to do. She learned she was profoundly deaf and needed hearing aids. Later, she had cochlear implants, which she said changed her life. Her audiologist at Dartmouth-Hitchcock said Paula Jo's story, used Paula Jo's success story in seminars throughout the country. Another student and advisee who spoke at my college retirement party was Jamie Childress Booten. The first time she came to my office and sat beside my desk, she noticed a giant paper clip with the quote, the best man for the job is a woman. Jamie said she knew right away we were going to get along just fine. Last March, she planned the, to, to surprise me by flying from Florida to support me and my induction into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Mary Ann White, an accounting major, uh, she served as my work-study student for two years. Because she liked my style of teaching, she enrolled in as many of my courses as possible and minored in marketing. She ended up pursuing a career in teaching rather than accounting. Mary Ann had agreed to speak as my, at my induction last year. Former student Carly McCarthy planned to serve as the moderator. She is the immediate past president of AW Maine and thanked me for encouraging her to become an active member and a leader in the state organization. Developing relationships with college colleagues was important as well. At Thomas, women supported women. Former colleague Dr. Philomena McPhee wrote a five-page letter of recommendation for my nomination packet. Her husband commented, I hope you spend that much time writing my obituary. She and Pat Karish organized a surprise retirement luncheon for me at the Waterville Country Club. At my college retirement party, President Laurie Lachance stressed my passion and enthusiasm for teaching. She mentioned I never canceled a class in my 41 years at Thomas. Laurie, another inspiring woman in the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, and I grew up in Dover Foxcroft and later served on the Foxcroft Academy Board of Trustees at the same time. Many men, such as Dr. Doug Lepley, supported women at Thomas, too. He agreed to serve as one of my presenters at the in-person induction scheduled for last March. In his speech, he included my impact on students as the advisor of Beta Sigma Omega Sorority and Alpha Chi Honor Society. Beta Sisters from the late 1980s still invite me to their gatherings and annual retreat. When I retired from Thomas College in 2012, I served as a two-year term as the president of AUW of Maine, an organization that supports women and girls. I am grateful that Judy Dinmore, the present recording secretary, nominated me for the Maine Women's Hall of Fame and prepared my nomination packet on behalf of AUW of Maine. She collected letters of recommendation from several people who supported my nomination. I wish to express my appreciation for their efforts as well. After I was selected as an inductee, I valued the assistance, patience, and kindness of Marilyn Ladd, 
co-chair of the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Thanks to the support of my family, I was able to actively participate in four organizations that support women and girls. When my husband, five-time Hall of Famer Dick Meter, was inducted into the Maine Sports Hall of Fame, he ended his speech by saying, if the truth be known, my wife is the Hall of Famer in our family. Today, that is true. Congratulations, Betty Jane. I am now pleased to introduce Karen Heck, co-creator of Hardy Girls Healthy Women and herself a 2008 Maine Women's Hall of Fame inductee, who will present this afternoon our second honoree for 2020, Joanne D'Arcangelo. Good afternoon. My friend Skeek Frazee and I had planned to do something different last year to introduce our fabulous, fearless friend, Joanne D'Arcangelo. But because nothing has gone as anyone has planned for the last year, I'm improvising a bit to make things more zoomable. If we were all together, Skeek and I would have engaged you in a game of Jeopardy. But I still invite you to shout out, who is Joanne D'Arcangelo? and feel free to raise a glass to her each time you do. So let's begin. In the category of reproductive rights for $600, this woman had the skill and foresight to ensure Maine was the first state in the nation to codify women's reproductive rights as enshrined in Roe v. Wade. Who is Joanne D'Arcangelo? With the election of Ronald Reagan, Joanne recognized that the federal protections of Roe would be chipped away federally and through state legislatures and court battles in the coming years. And wow, was she right. To be sure Maine women retained the right to control their reproductive lives, Joanne conceived of the codifying legislation and at the Maine Women's Lobby, she led the effort to ensure its passage. She subsequently went on to help craft our state's extraordinarily effective and compassionate parental notification law and led the statewide coalition that blocked a dangerous law limiting women's chances, choices when faced with problem pregnancies. So, human rights for 800. This lobbyist also passed Maine's first in the nation legislation requiring statewide sexual harassment training for employers. Who is Joanne D'Arcangelo? Another of Joanne's timely, prescient, and successful lobbying efforts, this landmark legislation became law the week Anita Hill was testifying on Capitol Hill. Equal justice for a thousand. This celebrated Maine advocate conceived of and birthed Maine Equal Justice Partners. Who is Joanne D'Arcangelo? In the 90s, Congress prohibited Pine Tree Legal from taking on challenges to agency decisions, welfare laws, or from initiating class action lawsuits on behalf of people with low income. As the executive director of the Maine Bar Foundation, Joanne worked to secure increased funding from court fees and interest from lawyers' trust accounts to create an organization focused on legal aid and economic justice. From access to health care, housing, transportation, and child care, to food and income security, higher education, and training. Okay, so the Daily Double. This fabulous feminist was the lobbyist who made Maine the third state in the country to require insurance companies to pay for contraception and also mammography screening. Say it with me. Who is Joanne D'Arcangelo? Yes, it's hard to believe the coverage we have today didn't exist in Maine in the 90s. We all know those rights don't exist without a continued effort to protect them. So thankfully, after 40 years as a lobbyist, activist, strategist, and advocate, Joanne is sharing what she knows about politics, organizing, facilitation, social justice, and more by mentoring and coaching emerging leaders. Those of us who have been lucky enough to work with Joanne over the past 40 years know that she has worked tirelessly to support multiple organizations and campaigns protecting and promoting the rights of women and girls. 
from her tenure as the executive director of the Maine Democratic Party and the Maine Trial Lawyers Association, to being the first full-time lobbyist for the Maine Women's Lobby, to public affairs director for Maine Family Planning and then Planned Parenthood of Northern New England, to key staff positions at the Maine State House, to leadership on countless boards and committees, Joanne has spent her career making life better for Maine's women, girls, and their families. Many of us attending this Zoom event know the long-term statewide impact that her work has had and continues to have, yet many whose lives have been positively impacted by her extraordinary work probably don't even know her name. Joanne has never claimed the spotlight for herself, but rather worked tirelessly behind the scenes to shine a light on injustice and inequality. We can all be grateful that she is now focused on sharing what she knows with a new generation of leaders. For her extraordinary body of work, Joanne has been the recipient of many awards for her political action on behalf of social justice. She was the 40th anniversary honoree of the Maine Women's Lobby and has received rewards from the Maine Family Planning Association, the Maine Women's Policy Center, the Portland YWCA, the Maine Civil Liberties Union, and the Maine Women's Fund. As a proud member of the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, I, along with five other members who supported her nomination, Congresswoman Shelley Pingree, Governor Janet Mills, Commissioner Laura Fortman, Patricia Ryan, and Ellen Golden, we congratulate and thank Joanne for her decades-long work to positively impact the lives of women and girls across our state and the nation. We know that there are none among us who have not benefited from her courageous, principled work, and we are delighted that she is taking her rightful place as an inductee into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Please join me in congratulating Joanne D'Arcangelo. Thank you, Karen, for that wonderful presentation. We will now hear from the 2020 Maine Women's Hall of Fame inductee, Joanne Doc Angelo. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Marilyn and Karen. I'm so honored to be invited into this group of amazing and good troublemaking Maine women. And I'm humbled by the accolades that Karen and Skeek Frazee, my nominators, have shared with you. And I wish they were all true. The true part is that we have made much progress in the last four plus decades. And we know these steps towards equality and equity and justice for all have taken a long time and we still have far to go. What's also true is that these achievements belong to many, not just any one. I've always loved Margaret Mead's elegantly simple proposition to never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. What I've also learned is that there's a formula to succeeding in that work, in any meaningful work in our culture. And the key variable in that formula is privilege. I've been privileged in at least three powerful ways that allowed me to seek the life I wanted and make the difference I hoped for. First, I had the gift of good beginnings. I'm the daughter of immigrant and working class parents who taught me the ethic of hard work and who dedicated their hands and hearts to making it possible for their kids to be the first in their extended family to go to college. The second is the love and support of a big sprawling family of friends and fellow citizens who have lifted me up when I've doubted myself, who've had my back and been shoulder to shoulder with me in all the big battles, both personal and political, and who showed me and taught me what I needed to know, how to be a principled advocate, how to empower others as an organizer, and how to be a proud feminist to fight for what I know I and other women deserve. Last but not least, the third variable is luck. So much depends on luck. Mine was being born white and not unrelated, landing in the right place at the right time under the right circumstances for someone to take a chance on me. I will break the never name name rules and say that somebody for me was Libby Mitchell, the first woman Democratic House Majority Leader in the state of Maine. 
When I came knocking on her door looking for a job, a 25 year old from away, fresh out of UMaine, a bit of a fish out of water with very little political experience and even less political savvy, she took a chance on me. That one decision set me on a path to do the work I love and build a future I wanted for myself and my community. So in honor of this wonderful place we call home, I ask all of us to think about the future Maine needs and deserves, one that's greater than what we've managed to build, one that still honors the community, independence and ingenuity we know as Maine, but one that's even better, one vibrant with diversity, racial, ethnic, cultural, one that respects and supports differences among people from within our state and from around the world and celebrates and builds on those differences and connections every day. Find that young person from away or from some tucked in corner of Maine who might be the fish out of water and transfer your privilege by taking a chance on them. I think this is how equity and justice for all will grow in small but certain degrees to create the main we can and should be. Karen, Marilyn, Skeek, my beloved community, I am so proud and so lucky to be part of it with you. Thank you so much for this wonderful honor. Congratulations, Joanne. We will now begin our induction program for our 2021 honorees. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Glenn Cummins, President of the University of Southern Maine. President Cummins will present our first 2021 inductee to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, Joyce Gibson. There's only one way to be included in the Maine Women's Hall of Fame, and that's to be an indomitable woman whose contributions have made an important and lasting impact on the world around them. I'm glad and lucky even to work alongside one of those women, honoree Joyce Taylor Gibson. When I arrived at the University of Southern Maine, I was consistently told by members of the Lewiston Auburn community how much they enjoyed, even loved working with Joyce Gibson. It speaks to the level of Joyce's character that she came from a community, a state outside of Maine, and within no time, she had earned friendship and trust. She came from as far away as Massachusetts and Mississippi, and she was able to integrate and work side by side with her fellow educators to effect change. Her character, a powerful combination of extra kind and yet principled and strong, is one of the main reasons I'm here today giving this speech, commemorating the impact that Joyce Taylor Gibson has had on the state of Maine. Advocacy, equity, social justice, these are not passions of Joyce's, they're convictions. They are at the forefront of every decision, every fight, every choice, every judgment, every compromise that Dr. Gibson makes. This was the individual USM needed when Joyce arrived in Maine as the Dean of USM's college at Lewiston Auburn. The impact Joyce has had at USM cannot be measured. She has fought for equal pay for women. She's received grants to increase recruitment, retention and promotion of women in STEM and social sciences and has never once been afraid to point out the elephant in the room, no matter where the room, no matter what the elephant. She has stepped up to lead our Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Council on top of her teaching responsibilities and has already overseen a change in the council's name and the council's bylaws. She is a true model for all of us. It is my pleasure to present my colleague, my friend, Dr. Joyce Taylor Gibson as a nominee for this award. Congratulations for this honor. Thank you, President Cummins, for that wonderful presentation. We will now hear from our 2021 Maine Women's Hall of Fame inductee, Joyce Gibson. Good afternoon. I feel grateful and blessed to be here to give thanks to those who chose to recognize me for the social justice work I do to support the lives of women, girls, and all those disenfranchised in our communities. Special thanks to the women who established this tradition of recognition for women of achievement and those who currently sustain these awards. Glenn Cummings, my president who nominated me, I'm thankful for, as well as my original families, the Taylors and Johnsons, who were represented most admirably by my mother, Mrs. Thelma B. Taylor, 
and my more immediate family, my husband Roland and children, without whom I could not be the person I am today. A brief history will offer a portal into my life and why it works for me. I was born to Southern parents who believe that each of us deserves a healthy, thriving life simply because God made us. Being black, poor farmers didn't matter so much, but you knew you had to work harder than some folks who were born into better circumstances. My siblings and I learned that it was our job to help other people who had a harder time in life, people less fortunate, people treated unfairly, no matter what their difference was from us. Dignity and justice mattered. And if we had an opportunity to make life better for others, we were expected to do so. Failure did not matter so much unless you did not use those lessons to perform better the next time. The color of your skin didn't matter so much either. But what was in your heart mattered immensely. Seek lessons from the heart, they told us, and then take action. My dad did not like farming so much, so one of his brothers did his farm work while dad walked to school a few miles away, and ultimately through attending Tougaloo College, Penn State University through the U.S. Army, and Howard University's dental school, he became a successful celebrated dentist. My mother, his trusted partner, was the consummate homemaker, managing the household for us and other families in need teaching us to take care of ourselves along with fighting for social justice. She is 97 years young now and is still doing her civil rights work in Nallwood, a military retirement community in Washington, D.C., where she lives. She is fierce, my first female role model. Now, the trip from Mississippi to Maine would take a little longer than I have to share the story, but I would like for you to remember just a few things. First, the opportunity to become Dean of Lewis and Auburn College turned out to be the best professional experience of my career. I learned to leverage my position as Dean to make positive change for our nearly 80% women's student body. I strongly believe that my professional behavior, my actions as a responsive and responsible individual serves as a role model for others, especially women and girls, people of color, and other groups marginalized in our society. Fighting for women's equity and promoting the rights of others cannot be overstated. Secondly, members of the Lewiston Auburn community were, along with the faculty and staff of LAC, my best collaborators in creating the best educational opportunities for our region. These community members fought to establish, fund, and build the college, working tirelessly to sustain it, especially through our legendary advisory board. It was from this platform that I was able to engage myself in issues affecting women, from my work with city councilors, the chamber, immigrant parents, new and old, from French Canadian to Somali, teacher superintendent, the ACLU's fight for children and women's rights, tackling faculty prejudice against LGBTQ peers, the unfair salaries of women, women faculty in our own higher education system. Promoting women's civic and public leadership through collegiate programs with the main new leadership organized through the Margaret Chase Smith Policy Center was also one of the highlights in my career. The struggles for equity are endless, yet energizing. And we do make progress, and we continue the work. When you honor me, you honor my colleagues. I am honored to be a part of this place at this time. Thank you very much. I am now pleased to introduce Joanne Farini Mundy, President of the University of Maine and the University of Maine at Machias, who will present this afternoon's second 2021 inductee, Lee Softly. 
Hello everyone, I'm Joan Farini Mundy, President of the University of Maine and its regional campus, the University of Maine at Machias. I am honored to take part in tonight's ceremony. Congratulations to Joanne D'Arcangelo, Betty Jane Stanhope Meter, Joyce Gibson, and Lee Softley on their inductions into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you for all you have done to make women's lives better. You're certainly joining a prestigious group of pioneers. From Margaret Chase Smith to Joan Benoit Samuelson, this group of women has individually and collectively demonstrated what is possible. Their talents and courage have changed the world and paved the way for others to dream, to excel, and to pay it forward. Tonight, I have the privilege of introducing Lee, who I am proud to say graduated Phi Beta Kappa from the University of Maine in 1976. Many of us know Lee through her work as the first female and youngest member of the court to be appointed Chief Justice of the Maine State Supreme Judicial Court. She served with integrity and distinction in that position for two decades. Lee is a powerful advocate for Maine women and families. In 2010, she was awarded the International Women's Forum Woman Who Makes a Difference Award for being a role model for girls and women throughout the world. She's won numerous other significant honors and awards, including the University of Maine Mary Ann Hartman Award, which recognizes distinguished Maine women whose accomplishments inspire others. Last spring, Lee became Dean of the University of Maine School of Law, from which she graduated in 1980. So now I have the pleasure of calling her a colleague, a mentor, and a trusted friend. Lee told News Center Maine that she loves lawyers, that they're creative, funny, smart problem solvers who care about people. What a perfect time and place for Lee to be at the University of Maine School of Law. Part of her job, as she says, is to help create new lawyers who understand the Constitution and rule of law, and understand that a law degree will help them do all kinds of things that make the world a better place. As Dean, she's focused on the quality of the student experience. Her innovative thinking about interdisciplinary programming demonstrates her commitment to further the progress of women and all others, underrepresented in law and in higher education. When Lee graduated from high school, she says there weren't any female judges in Maine. Today, 15 of the 50 judges in the Maine judicial branch are women. I applaud Lee's efforts to forge pathways to power for women, and I look forward to what's next. Congratulations, Lee. Thank you, President Farini Mundy, for that wonderful presentation. We will now hear from the 2021 Maine Women's Hall of Fame inductee, Lee Softly. Thank you, Marilyn. It is such an honor to have been inducted into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. I'm particularly honored to have been nominated by University of Maine's President, Dr. Joan Farini Mundy. Dr. Farini Mundy has been a mentor to me from my first days as Dean at the University of Maine School of Law. Not only is she brilliant, she's also an outstanding strategic thinker with an ability to inspire others to innovate, creating a positive impact on our communities, particularly as Maine has struggled with a global pandemic. The University of Maine system is fortunate to have so many talented women leading the way for our students. And Dr. Becky Wyke, president of the University of Maine at Augusta, whom you've heard from today, is another example of that talent. Dr. Wyke has also been a friend and a mentor for more years than she would want me to disclose. In her work as the commissioner of the Maine Department of Administrative and Financial Services, she helped me find the best solutions to judicial branch budgeting challenges. In these last several years, as the president of the University of Maine at Augusta, she has brought her substantial experience and talents to bear in creating a campus that meets the students where they are. That student-focused vision has made the University of Maine at Augusta one of the most vibrant and successful components of the entire system. There are so many amazingly talented women in Maine government, business, education, and healthcare that I am truly humbled by this award. I wanna thank all of the people involved in the Maine Women's Hall of Fame for recognizing and acknowledging the Maine women who have made such a difference in the world. The very first inductee, Senator Margaret Chase Smith, was a role model and a hero to everyone. Her declaration of conscience 
was praised by President Truman as one of the finest things that had happened in Washington in all his years in the Senate and White House. It has inspired so many of us through the years. Senator Smith made that speech in 1950. 40 years later in 1990, she was inducted into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame as the first inductee. And nearly 20 years after that, Maine's first woman governor was inducted into the Hall of Fame as one of the most recent inductees. Who can forget that night when Governor Janet Mills invited two young women onto the stage to sing? As Natalia and Shy sang Alicia Keys' Girl on Fire, we all understood that we were experiencing, finally, a much longed for moment in history. Little did we know that Maine's first woman governor would be confronted with a horrifying and unprecedented disaster in the form of a global pandemic. But we could have anticipated that she would rise to the occasion and with courage and clarity, assure that Maine has had one of the lowest rates of infection and death throughout this seemingly endless catastrophe. The many women inducted between Margaret Chase Smith and Governor Mills have accomplished remarkable things. And every day throughout this state, women are making a difference and changing the world. In this pandemic environment, it's important to acknowledge the many wonderful women who could be talking to you right now. The scientists and doctors at the University of Maine who have helped those of us in education understand and respond to a global pandemic. The frontline healthcare workers, elder care workers, and grocery store staff who have taken care of us in so many ways. The teachers at every level who have had to devise ways to teach at a distance, and particularly those who have had to teach six-year-olds through a Zoom program, and the parents who are juggling work at home with teaching at home. All of these women deserve this award. But here I sit, and I'm gonna take one moment to thank some of the unsung heroes who've helped me as we've all worked to make Maine a better place. It's already the best state in the nation. First, my mother, Jan Ingalls. She's 89 years old, and she has never stopped working to help the people in her community. And my dad, Dick Ingalls, taught me that hard work is the best way to express your support for family, friends, and community. And my fabulous husband, Bill, and our now four adult children have supported me every single day. Justice Caroline Glassman was the first woman on the Maine Supreme Judicial Court, and with her passion for justice, she led the way for those of us who followed, including my friend Susan Calkins. Justice Ellen Gorman, my original judicial tutor who became a friend and mentor in the courts and has a steely resolve that complements her sense of justice and fairness. She has never taken no for an answer in pushing to assure that laws work for Maine families. Justice Nancy Mills and former Judge Venveen Vafiadis, both of whom accepted my invitation to be trial court chiefs, creating Maine's first ever all women leadership group for the Maine courts. And now at Maine Law, Deirdre Smith, Jenny Riggins, Carrie Wilshusen, Nicole Vinyl, Terry Sutton, Nancy Mackin, and so many others have gone above and beyond the call of duty to help me learn a whole new system. And although this is a time to celebrate the accomplishments of women, I've been fortunate throughout my career to have had the support of many male colleagues, including James Eastman Smith, Jim Tierney, Governor and now Senator Angus King, Justices Bob Clifford, Don Alexander, Howard Dana, Tom Humphrey, Roland Cole, University Counsel Jim Thalen, and of course, 
Chancellor Dan Malloy, who lured me away from the best job in the world in order to be a part of the incredible University of Maine system. This system has it all. A highly respected research institute at UMaine, an urban university at USM, a state campus for adult, uh, I'm sorry, a statewide campus for adult learners at UMA, and rural campuses in Farmington, Presque Isle, Fort Kent, and Machias that represent life the way it should be. And now, the university's rapidly growing Graduate and Professional Center is partnering with Maine Law and the other graduate programs in the system. Through the vision of the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees, effectuated through the groundbreaking adoption of a unified accreditation process, and enhanced by the generosity of the Alphon Foundation, the university is transforming and reinforcing its focus on student success and the consequent success of Maine's economy. And benefiting from all this transformation is the University of Maine School of Law, where real life experience in the law is provided through the nationally recognized legal aid clinic. Access to practice outside of city centers is available through the rural practice programs. Students can find exciting career pathways through the cutting edge privacy program and a pathway to law in the blue economy through the ocean and coastal certificate, as well as the burgeoning Arctic and climate programs. It is the perfect time to come to law school and I could not be more excited about the future of the students at Maine Law. Finally, as we all think about what justice means in today's world and contemplate life beyond the pandemic, I wanna urge everyone to have faith that working together, we can make a difference. We can create a world where none of Maine's children go to bed hungry, where every one of our children and youth have ready access to excellent and engaging education from early childhood to vibrant careers, where those youth who experience mental health difficulties find help through mental health services, not through incarceration, where our youth and adults who need addiction and recovery resources can access those resources in time, where all of our youth and all of our students find the support they need to reach for their dreams. And where we all understand that diversity in race, religion, ethnicity, LGBTQ+, and all of the various aspects of humanity will make Maine a richer and more vibrant state. I am so grateful to the Maine Federation of Business and Professional Women and the University of Maine at Augusta for establishing this award and recognizing the amazing things that Maine women have accomplished. Thank you. Congratulations, Lee. We have now come to the conclusion of our program. We offer congratulations again to today's distinguished honorees and welcome them to the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. Your leadership, dedication, and membership to the women and the girls of Maine will affect the lives of Maine women today as well in the future. Thank you to all of you who have joined us today for this program and, we, and to those who have donated in honor or in memory of family and friends. Your donation will augment our scholarship through the BPW Maine Futurama Foundation program. Thank you to the Kennebec Savings Bank for your continuing support, support of our scholarship program. This May, the scholarship committee will be awarding six scholarships in the amount of $1,500 each. Scholarship applications and additional details are now available on the foundation's website at www.bpw.mainfoundation.org. We are hopeful that we'll be able to gather together in March 2022 for our 33rd Annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony. <laughs>